Pay me, pay me, pay me my silver now. Pay me or go to jail. Pay me my and silver. We're now. down to one. Yes, the one of two CFTC commissioners has officially resigned. Commissioner Don DeBerry Stump, how many times have I talked about her? Don DeBerry Stump just gave a the most bizarre resignation you'll ever hear. CFTC commissioner, by law, has a five-year contract. Anything leaving before that, you're leaving. You're quitting. Commissioner Don DeBerry Stump just made this statement. Earlier this year, I informed the Senate Republican leader, Mitch McConnell, and the White House that I will not be seeking another five-year appointment at the upcoming conclusion of my term. Upcoming conclusion of my term. Uh, okay. As the President of the United States uh, Senate consider the nomination to fill the position, I intend to continue working alongside acting Chairman Benham to carry out the important work of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. <clears throat> That's not true, by the way. She's not going to do anything. It is an honor of it is the honor of my career to count myself among those who served as commissioners of the CFTC. That's one freaking sad career. Sorry for the snarkiness. Those whom I have the, had the privilege to work alongside, those who ca came before me, and those who will lead the agency into the future, I am humbled to have been tasked with such responsibility. Like the markets we oversee, the composition of the commission is, by design, constantly evolving to gain the benefit of fresh perspectives. I'm excited to see how those who will next fill the commission carry forward the ch charge in their own ways while building upon the strong foundation built by many. <clears throat> um, my God. So I have to say, my God. Let's see. Commission and commissioners. Five. There's supposed to be five, Joe Biden. Five. How many are there? One, two, and she just stepped down. Don Barry Stump just stepped down. Now, it gets even crazier about Don DeBerry Stump. Listen to this math. <clears throat> Don DeBerry Stump was nominated by President Trump to serve as the commissioner of the Commodities Futures Trading Commission. On June 12, 2017, she was nominated. She doesn't start her term until she gets sworn in. She was unanimously confirmed by the Senate on August 28, 2018. So that's when she went into office. August 28, 2018. Let's count five years. 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. 2023 on August 28th is the end of her term. 2023, not yet next year. And in August. This is insane. 2023. And she's saying in her goodbye farewell letter. <clears throat> I intend to continue working alongside Barry Benham, Chairman Benham, to carry out the important work of the, of the committee. I will not be seeking another five-year appointment at the upcoming conclusion of my term. Your term is barely halfway through. Barely halfway through. And then I went on further to find out when she is leaving, and it turns out she's leaving, I believe it is, let's see, under press releases. Public statements, maybe. David, here we go. That's the same one. She's leaving in April of 2022. And she said, <laughs> this is insane. This is insane. She's quitting. And she's saying she's fulfilling her term. She's not. <clears throat> she's over a year short of a five-year term. Anyway, does it really matter? But look who's left. Right here. Acting Chairman Rostin Benham. Rostin Benham, acting chairman Rostin Benham, the criminal that we all know he is, that tamped down the silver market. That's all that's left, this schmo. And it says here 
I mean, for Don DeBerry's stump, listen to the math. Don DeBerry's stump was nominated by President Trump to serve the commissioner of the CFTC on June 12th. She was unanimously confirmed on August 18th. For the remainder of a five-year term expiring April 22nd? What? A five-year term should be August 2023, and they're saying she's leaving on April 22nd. The remainder of a five-year term expiring. I mean, even if you go to the day she was even mentioned by Trump or nominated by Trump, that was June 12th. It should have been go out to all the way to June. She's a year and a half short of fulfilling her obligation. And they said she's unanimously confirmed by the Senate, sworn into office for the remainder of the five-year term expiring in April. <clears throat> Just crazy. But this is what's going on. There's supposed to be five commissioners on the CFTC. Biden has added zero. Now there's one, Rustin Benham. You want to hear him? Listen to Rustin Benham talk about how they were able to tamp down the, the price of silver for the retail customers. Listen to this. Well, I do want to come back to sustainability later in our conversation, but I did want to turn to another issue that is getting a lot of tension, especially in the equities markets, and that's the rise of the retail uh, trader and investor. Um, you know, we had uh, you know several weeks back, you know, certain stocks being um, you know the darlings of the retail community and driving up prices, um, really sort of pitting retail participants against some of the institutional buyers in these markets. And the CFTC put out a, a public statement around the silver markets, and you're keeping a close eye on that. Can you follow up uh, on what the CFTC may be doing uh, in regards to this rise of retail participation, making sure that you know these important vehicles that we talk about, futures and options, are, are, are accessible to the retail participants, but also with the proper risk disclosures and the proper um, you know oversight um, of those products. So give us some thoughts on how this phenomena is impacting the CFTC. Yeah, thanks, Walt. It's a it's a great question. Uh, it's something that I've been thinking about, and you know the the events around the silver markets happened you know shortly after I took over. Uh, you know, I think in late January, and I think it's important to distinguish what an equity space with what happened in, in our markets in the future space, specifically with the, few, uh, the silver contract. And in many respects, um, the resiliency and the market structure of uh, the futures market really were able to tamp down um, what could have been a much worse situation in the silver markets. And just pointing to a couple things that I've observed over the past couple of weeks. You heard that, right? was able to tamp down the price of silver. Tamp down, the, that is the definition of market manipulation. Futures and options markets are not supposed to set price. Rustin Benham was able to tamp down with all his tools. This is a fraud, this is a farce. This in institution, the CFTC with their two commissioners, is ridiculous. And now there's just going to be one because Don DeBerry Stump left a year and five months early. We, it didn't really say when she's going to leave. Maybe yeah, April. Oh, my God. What the hell? Why hasn't Joe Biden filled any of these spots? Because it is the most important thing in all financial markets. Keeping a tamp down on the price of silver. And it's working. Congratulations, you criminals. But for everybody who's listening to this, you know that you can go buy physical silver cheap right now. and It's not going to stay that way. Go to your local coin shop. Buy as much physical as you can. Contact Andy Sheckman if you don't have a local guy. He's my broker, Andy Sheckman. Send him an email, Andy, A-N-D-Y, at milesfranklin.com. Ask him what he's got in inventory. Buy as much as you can. Have it send it to your front door. This fraud is about to end. One, one left. One commissioner left on a board that's supposed to have five. How are we supposed to... I mean, listen to what Don DeBerry Stump said in her goodbye speech again. And I know I'm harping on this, but it's important. Remarks by Don DeBerry Stump. Like the markets we oversee, first of all, there's no we anymore. 
like the markets that Rust and Benham oversees, the composition of the commission is, by design, constantly evolving to gain the benefit of fresh perspectives. How could one commissioner add any kind of fresh perspective, especially if that commissioner is the guy who says, we're going to tamp down. Anytime a retail investor tries to drive up the price of silver, we're going to tamp that down. I didn't see them tamping down JP Morgan for holding back the price of silver over the 10 years that they couldn't fucking figure out that there was silver manipulation going on. Farewell, Donda Stump. Good luck to you. Hope you don't end up in jail like all of your predecessors except Bart Chilton, probably belonged in jail. As for who's doing it, we know who's doing it. Look at the deliveries this month. J.P. Morgan, 6,000 contracts. Bank of America, 5,000 contracts. That's that's your entire silver market for deliveries this month. B of A paying back J.P. Morgan because they were able to borrow the money in January to tamp down the price. Welcome to America. By the way, those who are looking for the crash in, in the global financial system, remember what happened right before COVID hit back in December of 2019? They had this. Pandemic simulation exercise spotlights massive preparedness gap. This is called Event 201 back in November 2019. So this huge simulation happens right before in December COVID hits. COVID is released. Look what happened. Just happened. This is posted today. Exclusive IMF, 10 countries simulate cyber attack on global financial system. There you go. They are required by their cult to tell you what they're going to do before they do it. They did it before 9-11. They did it before the pandemic. Now they're doing it right before the global financial cyber crash. When everything goes dark. Hang on to your hats, my friends. This happened the beginning of the month, I believe. Let's take a look. They did it for 10 days. The simulation likely caused what official officials called sophisticated players, several types of attacks that impacted global foreign exchange, bond markets, liquidity, integrity of data, and transactions between importers and exports. What a perfect way to hide your crimes. And look at, look at their plan is. It is two. The participants, dis the participants discussed multilateral policies to respond to the crisis, including now. Here's what here's what's going to come: coordinated bank holidays, debt repayment grace periods, swap and repo agreements. Oh, wonderful! Here we go again. And number three: coordinated delinking from major currencies. What the hell? Who's going to delink from who? I thought it's a free market. Floating currencies are free market. Everybody's supposed to be trading against each other. Coordinated, meaning they're colluding to commit a crime. Delinking of major currencies. This is going to get ugly beyond ugly. But they are telling you, this is your warning. Here's what's coming. And I think it could be any day, probably between the, the 15th of December and the end of the first quarter, we are going to see a global, exactly what they said here, a cyber attack on the global financial system. This is how they wash away their sins. All these people belong in jail. You want more, go to RoadToRuder.com. Give me a subscribe on YouTube, even though they'll take it off. Subscribe anyway. And put your name and email address in the Road to Ruder website to get um, emails sent directly to you. By the way, Merchandise coming soon for Christmas. Road to Ruta merchandise. Check out that hat. Paige is working on the uh, all the all the outfits and gear. It's going to be awesome. So keep an ear out for that. And uh, this is Bix. Crazy days. I'll talk to you later. Mm -hmm.